What's up guys, it's Project, aka Space Dragon Waifu, aka But Still a Guy, aka Bowmaster Flex, bringing you guys the new 3.0 bow meta builds. With 3.0, it is mostly still Rampage for Rapid, except one element, and well, Pierce expands to several options now. Although there is no new domination like some of the melee weapons are experiencing, it's mostly variances of 1s and 3s per arrow at most, so yeah. If you made a lot of Rampage, I suppose you can stick with them, with the bonus of you being able to layer any weapon design onto them now. Let's get the video underway. If you're interested in Longsword and Greatsword 3.0 builds, check them out in the end screen annotations after watching this video. First off, food. Eat for booster, marksman, and fighter. Always drink dash juice or hit stamina butterflies to play bow more smoothly. It's a big DPS gain. Dogs and cats, important too, more so for cats. If you're doing a catless run, pretty much the old 2.0 builds would be the best for you, but if you got that catnip, then you want a fighter palico with rousing roar and power drum and go fight win for 30% affinity, attack and defense up, and more stamina. Seriously, bow users, bring at least one cat unless you're TA running. Just make sure to use felvine at the start of the quest to speed their buffing up. For dogs, go for the usual para parasol and heavy strike scroll combo. So, with that hoopla out of the way, build all, start all. First build is Rampage. This is the standard 2.0 bow build. Basically, did not get an upgrade. If you want Extender 1, this is the build to go with. Nothing new aside changing Ellie Boost 1 to Attack 4 now for ramp up. However, since we have so much raw power now from 3.0, if you're fine with losing extender, say against non-apex monsters, then here is a more damage oriented version to kill those guys even faster. Enter Critical Rampage Bow. Essentially, you trade 2 attack for 2 crit boost and latent power. So as said, without palicos, go 2.0, or if you suck at bow, stick to 2.0 as getting crits on weak spots will be essential for the new build to shine. If you're hitting a bunch of non-weak spots or sub-45 hit zones that won't proc weakness exploit, you're better off with 2.0. However, if you do have cats and your aim is decent enough, the new crit boost build will outshine the old 2.0 by a smidge. Gets the usual skills I got before, cons 4, surge 2, and of course, wex 3 and reload speed 2 to change ammos on the fly without having to load them manually. Now, this does require a cons 3, 3-2 three, slot charm minimum, same for my 2.0 build, which is a fairly tall order, but I will recommend a budget build shortly, but for ice, thunder, water, and fire rapid, you want this setup or the 2.0 setup. Dragon we'll talk about in a bit. But first, a comparison between this and the old one against Event Tetranodon, which is 30 weak to Thunder to the face. If you don't know, 30 is the highest elemental weak zone, and only a few monsters have it, so the crit boost will gain a bigger lead versus monsters of 25 or lower. But likewise, it is physically 60 weak hit zone, so that's above average too. The test was with only Might Seed and Herculean Draw with Booster and Marksman food. The numbers are shown there for comparison. This is with a new attack for ramp up which is better than Ellie Boost 1, but against the new build you get higher non-crit numbers with the 2.0 build, but more higher crit numbers with the crit boost version. So bring in cats for 30% and you're looking at 80% of the time you getting higher numbers and 20% of the time getting less numbers. 90% for higher numbers once latent power kicks in, so overall the crit boost version is ahead, flat out. But again, you lose the Vade Extender. Now, for Dragon, the best Rapid Bow is now Ibushi. So yes, as predicted in my 2.0 video, I told you guys Ibushi had a chance to win out, and it did! With this new Crit Boost build and Dragon Element 4 ramp up. Anti-Aerial is a 5% raw boost, however the 10 extra Dragon pulls ahead by like 1 damage, upper and lower, so go Dragon ramp up. But overall, it beats out Rampage Dragon Bow as the only difference then is 5 Dragon for Ibushi or 5 more raw for Ramp, and between those against a monster like Rathalos like you see in the background, the 5 more Dragon wins out. However, for a 25 weak monster, perhaps it'll even out. But yeah, if you want an excuse not to use Rampage, Ibushi finally gives you one, and I even got a sub 2 minute Wrath kill with it. Pretty sweet. So those are the new best Rampage Rapid builds. For Arc Shot, I chose Brace so you have some flinch free for multiplayer. For a budget version, here you go, pretty much exactly like my 2.0 video. For Switch Skills, Absolute Power Shot, Dodge Bolt, and your choice of Aerial Aim or Focus Shot will be the go-tos. Aerial is great for mounts, 
while Focus Shot does gain you some stamina in a pinch. As far as Valstrak's bow, I did do a test and the numbers were overall lower. Spread does get 5 arrows versus Rapids 4, but it's harder to hit certain monsters with it and you do have to play pretty close range to hit something like Raf's face consistently, so overall, I don't think it's worth it. Being 40 raw behind is just too much, even with Wyvern exploits, but there's the test and build there. If you're wondering about Narwa bow, same kind of reasoning, no slots, low raw, wacky shot types, nah. But speaking of spread, the next build. It is not the best bow build in the game in the slightest. However, Camellio getting an upgrade did make it the favorable raw bow to use. So scrapping Herald bow for the new Cami option as the rapid bows pull too far ahead of Herald. Plus Cami's looks cool. With the extra level 3 slot, you can get full crit boost, latent power 1, full stamp surge and Ava 1, beating out the attack 4 option. Like I said, spread is wonky. However, for Rampage specifically, this may very well be the best bow. With counter signal up and cats, you'll be dealing some crazy damage to the bigger monsters that allow you to land your shots better, like against Apex Diablos. Without Herculean Draw, I'm dealing 2k damage each spread shot every second, so like 6k damage from your first rapid to your second power shot and repeat. So that's basically the only reason I'm mentioning this for Rampage speedruns. Teostra is fine to use too for the status ailment submission, but if your goal is speed, then Camellios is your go-to. The next builds are for Pierce. With 3.0, Rampage Dragon Pierce is the new king, introducing Dragon's Bane. Beating out Narga now as the new All-Mother doesn't land on the belly as much, so your normal shots will matter more. This is the most optimal setup I can configure, which has been used to get a sub for an armor kill already from a Japanese speedrunner. I tried various combos, but this one at full life is the best. Because you get max spear bird, you only need constitution 3 minimum, which then you can argue you don't eat at all if you drink dash juice twice, but speedrunners run it, so I will favor their choice here. So yeah, Dragon Pierce Rampage Bow is best for all mother, and well, perhaps every monster you want to pierce, that's weak to dragon. Specifically for all mother though, I gemmed in Leap of Faith which lets you bypass her Dragonator attack super easy, so if you find yourself getting hit or even dying to this attack, randoms, slot in Leap of Faith, which is just a level 1 deco, so try it out. Otherwise, toss it for more Dragon attack. For budget version, here you go. Next is Dioras. Kush gets Kushala's Soul, which gives you 25% affinity after any shot you do, and even 30% after several attacks in a row, which Bo is obviously good at, helping you land those criticals more than Rampage Bo can. And with some Wex, you should reach 100% affinity easy with Cats, so giving you a build option here, particularly because I built mine unique. Enter Bubbly Deora. That's right, Bubbly Dance build, woo! Thanks to Valstrax set, you can get level 3 Bubbly and level 3 Resuscitate together on Bow without gimping too much. You do drop to level 2 Const, but with Bubbly it'll knock it up to 3 and you get a Vade Window as well for you to better dodge things. The only downside is no extender, but with the extra window, I find it's about on par with dodging success. Now the way to activate Bubbly Dance is 3 normal dodges or 4 dodge bolt dodges. You mostly do the 3 normal right before a fight. If you get hit though, it does remove the buff. However, it's not that big a deal considering you can get it back, unlike peak performance which would force a heal to full. But the build does use a Valstrax piece with Dragonheart, so you do need to stay above 50% HP lest you're going to lose your ice element on your weapon till you heal back above it, so be careful there, stay above 50% HP. But this is about as much damage as you're gonna get aside Adrenaline with Dragonheart. Was a bit disappointed we still can't get Crit Boost 3 and Wex 3 on Pierce or Rapid builds, stupid mighty bow feather, but oh well. Including Diora's bow for some variants. There is no budget version here, but you can make a similar setup with Bubbly 2 with a 2 2 1 or 3 2 1 slot charm. And last build is Rachna's bow. Similar to my 2.0, it got a slight bump in damage. This one's mainly to shred Camellios. Again, Valstrax piece gets you some more power, netting Crit Boost 3 which wins out over the old Attack 2 CB1. You want to run Normal Dodge instead of Dodge Bolt for this build as Kami's attacks are easy to dodge, so it'll save you an Extender and you get Stamp Surge 3 to compensate for the extra stamina cost. 
But yep, build melts Cami. And well, that's about it. Aside from maybe a Moldron. But here's a budget version, yay! Which honestly comes super close to the pro version and even gets reload 2 by sacrificing an elemental deco. Although, it does lose one Stam Surge, so up to you whether you think Stam Surge 3 is worth it for the fights. Otherwise, you can gain some damage with the pro version with peak performance level 1. But yeah, those are the final bow builds for 3.0, which we will likely have to stick around until 4.0 or I guess G rank. Hopefully the upcoming events add more weapons at least, to freshen up the meta after it settles in a week or two. But hope you guys enjoyed, I try my best with the test and junk to showcase the differences, but all in all I guess it depends on charms. A Pierce 2 with a 3-1-1 slot charm for example, would be best in slot for the Pierce versions I'm pretty sure, but with a cons 2-2-2 slot you can get away with most builds decently. And considering Bow was not nerfed still, let's just say it is what it is. Expect Bo to dominate the speedrun meta for weeks or even months to come. But that's all for me, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Pierce that like button and go check out my other 3.0 videos in the end screen annotations shortly. Next build video will be Swax. So comment down below what you guys think of the new bow builds. Are there any better alternatives or bows you found success with that I didn't mention? Let me know in the comments down below and before leaving make sure to subscribe and hit the noti for more Rise Epicness. Epicness. Epicness.